for coming today. Um, yeah, one of the things that uh, you don't know about me that I'm a great rock artist. You, you know, and I actually wrote this jingle. Uh, no, just kidding. <laughs> um, anyways, let's start. Thank you for coming. Uh, whoever, I don't know who I am. I work in the industry about 26 years now. Uh, I compose lots of video games. Uh, maybe some of them you know, the Fallout series, Dragon Age series, uh, Prince of Persia series, um, Baldur's Gate, SOCOM, uh, Crisis, you know. Um, Siberia. And Siberia is one of my very, very, very beloved <sighs> Anyways, um, my colleagues here before me gave like a very, very elaborated and technical um, um, speeches, which I actually learned a lot from. And so today I'm actually going to concentrate a little bit more on the artistic uh, side of things in the music. I know that definitely a lot of you guys here are composers. Some of you are sound designers or audio enthusiasts, I think that this will, could help a lot of you. So, without further ado, let's start, and I'll play you a little piece, and after it, I'll start talking. Is it my cue? And the reason why I played you this is because I wanted to talk about how to compose music for out of the world games. So before we just start with all the artistic elements and stuff, we need to know our missions. And so when we, or I at this point, was given this assignment to write a musical soundscape for out of this world, I had to understand what is out of the world. So I just wrote this little slogan, just out of the world, is anything that happens in and uncharted and unknown territory, whether it's out of our planet or it's inside the planet, but it's sort of like an imaginary um, reality, okay? And when I'm thinking about this, I think about three things. It's seeing, okay, and we could watch stuff that is being sent to us by the uh, producers and everything and assets from the game. And then that actually sparks an imagination inside of us. The imagination creates feelings. And for me, after the feelings comes the music. And without these three elements, I cannot really start working. So when I'm diving into a game, and I think we just spoke about it, um, I'd like to go and visit the game company and really first, before any note is being written, and start to learn about what is it? What is it you want from me here? What do you want the player to feel when they're playing your game. And today we're going to talk a little bit about few techniques that after I got down, okay, this is the feeling you want, then let's see how to create it. So, seeing, okay, is basically we're translating it into a view. And I'll start playing this piece again and then talk through it so you'll understand. This is what I wrote when I actually saw the first sort of like world. The sky, the night, the stars, everything. And it's 
create this imagination in me that later on created this feeling, which is awe, something scary, curious, and overwhelmed. Now, let's see what we have here. We have the element in this piece, for example, breaks into three layers. The first layer is what we heard first, which is a very, very fast moving element, okay? So this sort of like very fast moving, but not really harmonic, but something that just randomly moving creates this some sort of like energy that flows, okay? Then, on top of it, we have one big melody, all right? So the one big melody on top of it creates this sort of like statement. This is what we are entering. When you play a very slow melody on top of very, very fast moving ele elements like the clarinets and the woodwinds that are moving, what did we get? We get like a very special attention to the slow element, okay? The French horns are playing the ta, ta, di, da, 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 you know, and it's a, sort of like an announcement. But underneath this, there is just the things that moving. And I'm thinking like, oh, meteors are flying or spaceships are flying in the air. But the main energy, the main energy when we see space is what is being represented by this melody. Underneath this is the swelling, okay? Um, I didn't really plan this, okay? I just started by, can we have this move? I can play some stuff for you guys. <laughs> if it's working, yeah? Later. Anyways, so I started basically playing this very fast note and it created sort of like a wall of sound. And on top of the wall of sound, it's really easy to layer a melody. So this is a great technique when you want to create something that will stand strong create something that will not mean a lot, but still move a lot, so you get used to it, and then on top of it, you suddenly hear the melody. And here it is again, so you'll get it. And here comes the melody. And everything is moving and moving and moving and moving and moving and moving. Now note another thing about this thing. We don't know if we're in A minor or C major or, or any harmonic really stand on top of anything, okay? What tonality are we in? We are not, okay? We are in space. So you just and I'll, later on, I'll show you a little bit in details how to create these kind of um, um, techniques from harmonic point of view. Here is another technique. And um, this one, I actually started, this was like the second piece that I wrote for Starfield. And here it is. So I start with a high flute. Let's stop here.
okay the beauty of this thing is that it doesn't create any tension but it also doesn't create any resolution okay if i'll play you this oh, right if i'll play you this but when you play this it's neither okay it just gave you a floaty feeling let's continue I'm repeating this repetition when you write a theme is so important and now it's starting to develop still hear this fourth but then we hear things start to grow and we have a feeling of going up and we're building we're building we're building then rest so when I wrote this, there are four elements that, you know, came to mind. First is the sound selection. And then there is the melodic selection, and then the harmonic selection, and then the pace selection, all right? So, if we'll go into the melodic selection and the sound selection, I've chosen the high flute, which I doubled with synthesizer, which creates a very, very high-pitched, almost trilling pitch. Then underneath this, this like grainy pad, and underneath this even lower pad, and the strings are in the middle. You get a very vast element of something. And since from harmonic point of view, you did not really define where you are, you gave them some sort of like a spacey feeling by playing these very high notes above there and then really the low and undefined element. So let's hear it again so you could see that. And here is the flute. And underneath this start. And then we repeat it. always think in visions so for example if the flutes represent a far light of a star the pianos is actually the reflection because it's bright and I'm thinking of it in terms of vision I'm trying really to visualize before I even start composing I almost draw a picture with the music. Now, one of the techniques that I use, like I told you, is the harmonic. And you could see that what I did here is actually using the these fourth and I could go all day long with these fourth and it doesn't lead anywhere it doesn't take you anywhere it doesn't go anywhere but it go everywhere okay you are nowhere to be found in space it doesn't create any feeling of stress but it doesn't really give you a feeling of you know resolution it's just emptiness and it's cold and this is why i've chosen this element you know just work with these fours and throughout the whole piece i'm using these fourth intervals as my tool and this is sort of like again the um like you know like john said it's like the pillars of of the com composition 
Now, after that, we have the pace. And the pace is such a cool thing. Because if you hear it, it's really, really slow. But inside of it, there's again very, very fast elements that are moving and jumping and streaming, okay? So you get the slow main movement and then inside all these grainy things that makes everything complex. And again, this is the way, you know, I envisioned space when I composed it, okay? Now let's go to a different technique, and I call it the space chord. Again, very high notes, okay? But listen what happened now. say when you want to establish something and this is it so now I'll show you why this is so cool all right so we have like three chords sounds like this. So it's not these fourth, but it's actually cooler because it creates this augmented chord on top of augmented chord on top of augmented chord. So for this, and it doesn't it sounds very spacey to me. And you could basically use this also in the melody. So you could just do this. Okay, same thing. You are nowhere and you are everywhere. All right? Again, this kind of like is, I found it basically like one of the best assets. And I'm not talking to you only as a composer. If it, even if you don't have any knowledge in composition, you still can realize that we are looking for specific colors to describe our feeling, okay? And so, if you're, for example, an audio director, you could tell your composer, okay, right now I'm looking for, invent for me something that I will feel nowhere but everywhere in the same time. Okay, so again, you know, I did not define. I'm not in C major, I'm not in E major, and I'm not in A flat major, I'm everywhere. And this basically is one of the things that is keep on repeating and repeating and repeating in Starfield. And the music of Starfield, again, a lot of it is something that I tried not to define so much as in terms of um, like harmonic center, but make it floaty. Um, let's. Uh, Let's hear that again now after I taught you and then you could basically, you know. And now after um, we discovered um, sort of like the these things after only when I was 
because usually when you go to compose music for video games, um, you are what what usually um, you're doing. You're looking for the main theme. Okay, in Starfield, we didn't work this way. First, we developed together just the touch, the sound, the soundscape, the harmony. Only then, and I think it was almost a year after um, I developed all these cues, only then I went into the main theme, all right? And I don't think, please, I mean, not a lot of people heard it in this way, so let's just try to keep it. But see how I took from all these cues and again, here is our augmented part. Now comes the three chord of the space. And here are the three chords. From the first cue, I just basically took this technique and applied it into the Starfield main theme. Told you about repetition, yeah. repeating, and when you are working with composers, always tell them, okay, you made an announcement, repeat it, so it will be catchy, and people remember it. position everything comes from a very simple element and for me as a composer when I'm working on a game with audio director the first thing before I even start the game I go to the audio director and ask them three questions where okay when and why. The three W's for me are so important, okay? Starfield, where? Out in space, okay? When? Somewhere in the future, and why? Why, for the Starfield, I cannot tell you, but this is for you to discover. Um, but the main derivative, actually, for what I wrote for Starfield is not about the where and it's not about the when, it's about the why. And it gets really philosophical, but actually using these very, very sim simple elements that I showed you, all right, that you don't want to define harmony. You want the harmony to be somewhat totally disconnected 
and detached from where you go, this is also opening for you so many possibilities to build interesting layers, interesting melodies on top, it, on top of it. And then, again, you are not committed to anything. You're just committed to one thing. What do you want the player to feel? And in Starfield, 80% of the time, you will feel somewhat detached. You will feel somewhat scared. But mainly, you will feel in awe. And it's always bigger than you. The mission is bigger than you. The story is bigger than you. The space is bigger than you. Everything is bigger than you. So how would you do it? You don't do this. Okay, and this could work amazing for different game, but not for Starfield, okay? You have to create, again, something that will be neutral, but then that will say a lot. It's so, it really took us long time really to define, because it's not only about the har harmony, it's not only about the melody, it's also about the combination of the sounds. And again, if there are audio directors there, here, you need to know what to ask your composer. And you need to be brave enough to venture into something that you want to achieve. And again, going back to what do we want the player to feel? And after you figured out what you want the player to feel, then you could start venturing. Here's another uh, example, this time for a different game. Actually, a game that was created here in Poland by People Can Fly called Outriders. And the reason is in Outriders, obviously, you're in space, right? But there is desert. How can I create music for desert in space? So I'll take a flute, but I'll fuck it up. And I'll take a violin or guitar, and I'll screw it up even more. You can tell that this is flute, okay? You can tell that this is kind of a bowed guitar. But really? Is it it? I don't know. See, it's a flute. In fact, I played it. <laughs> and I suck. <laughs> but the way you're playing with this, you tell the audience and the and the players and the listeners, yes, this is flute. But can you imagine how this flute looks like? Listen to this. Can you really imagine how this flute looks? I mean, I don't want to... It's good that you're not in my head right now. <laughs> because I imagined quite a wild things. And it doesn't look like a flute at all. <laughs> you blow it, yes. You go wild with this thing. And this is the only way to achieve this kind of um, element that, yes, it is desert, but no, it's not here. So our mission is to describe a known element, desert, right? Put on in an unknown world. And for me, the secret, and really the secret sauce is you take a known element, you take an unknown sound, and you combine both. So think about it, all right? The known element is the flute. And the flute in many times, because it's airy and it sounds dry, it feels like the wind in the desert, okay? But then, when we treat it, and later on I'll show you a little bit, actually I did film myself, um, doing some of these tricks, so just wait. Um, uh, we take it 
and we really enhance it in a way that you still could tell that it's a flute, but then it becomes so weird that you understand, all right, we're not in Kansas anymore, okay? Now, one of the very basic principles in composition that I always hold is this. Every composition should be about 70 to 80 percent something that you could relate to from harmonic point of view, melodic point of view, or rhythmic point of view, okay? It's something that maybe you heard before, something that reminds, something that connects you with the piece right away. But then, 20 percent, 15 percent, you insert something new. You look for something they never heard before. And then, when suddenly, on top of this known elements, 70, 80, 85 percent stuff that, hey, yeah, yeah, we know, this is strings, this is brass, this is bad, shit, what's that? All right? This is where I get all you. This is where I get you. This is where I make sure that you listen to what I have to say. And I better have it in something that is very, very important. And something that will tell me, here is where we want to be. So again, in this, you know, desert thing, we hear the drums, everything, and those heads, you know, we could identify with some of these things. But the flute on top of it is really what screws it up. It's like where this came from. So if you're managing to create this balance of 85%, 80% known elements in your music, but then look for this very unique sound, you achieved what you need to do as a composer. Because if you do everything unknown, if everything is weird, nobody could connect to you. But, and if you do everything expected, then it's gonna be fucking boring. But if you will do something like, again, most of it is accessible, some of it is weird. And it takes time. I really recommend if, you know, to all the composers here, do not rely on libraries out there and there are amazing libraries try to create for this little hook your own sound and it's not that hard all you need So, simple everyday technique for creating unique musical sound out of a sample, do it yourself. Convert simple wooden flute into a space flute. And this is really, really basic. Let's go. So like we said, the first thing is to record a very simple wooden flute into Cubase. Here we go. The second stage is to convert it into very audio, and here it is. With Let's hear Cubase, it. you know what's very audio, is it? Of course, I already applied some reverb on it, but you know that just comes without. But here comes very simple, interesting. And now, let's take this thing and drop it a lot down and see how this sounds. <laughs> If you heard wow. this sound, adding some we, and reverb onto it, you didn't hear the it, first one. You, did, so you wouldn't know and what it see, is, and I could try it on you. It already sounds kind of alien. Now, the next stage will be to try to apply some kind of interesting effects. Now we want to try a few things. The first thing I want to do is to try to add 
the granular synthesizer application portal if you're let's uh, if you it. know what portal is it's and here we go mean this is portal let's hear how it sounds through portal obviously there are few settings here let's try that Interesting. We could try another settings. Kind of like this one. It's called Grain Swell. Remember how it started and how it sounds now? A little different. And this is just this is really cool. The tip of okay. the iceberg of and what now, you can do is just stuff it, that you record. We could add some more stuff. For example, some chorus. Chorus or any other modulation always help to make things really weird. So we're going to go to modulation. And we're going to choose something. I don't know. And again, this is totally up to you what you want to do with this. But the simple chorus, if we'll go for like eight, will sound like this. Let's see that it's too radical. Let's see it in four. And there you go. We took something so simple, like a flute, and made it weird. And we did it in less than five minutes. So this is just five minutes. <laughs> and obviously, it's all given to your interpretation, taste, and everything. But again, Doing it yourself and create something simple as this, again, adds so much power to your scoring. So again, you know, I mean, we are in a world that we heard everything. We, everybody's listening and watching YouTube all the time and we have accessibility to all the videos in the world and everything. And we always have the feeling that we know it all and we heard it all. Well, here is the news <laughs> brief for you guys. As composers and as audio directors and as producers, our mission is actually to try to introduce to the world something that they did not hear before, all right? And I know it's not really easy to do, but the first thing that when I'm approaching a project, I will look for a point of originality. And it's not coming from the point that, hey, I want to be original. No, it's coming from the point that each project deserves a very unique treatment. Each video game has something that people put in it so many hours. So much love, so much hate, so much blood, tears, sweat, everything. It deserves our utmost attention. And we need, as composers, to give it the most. And the most is really, we can always like get away with stuff. And you know what? Unfortunately, and don't quote me, I hear in Hollywood and in very, very big AAA movies, Lots of people that just going this way. Well, it ain't our way, okay? And I think that we should be very proud the fact that we are part of the video game industry and we always, we never will go for the obvious. We are not going to resort to the just, oh, it works. No, it's not working. It should be fucking great. It should be it should blow everybody out, out of the water. And nothing less than this is good. But you know what? I always had this attitude. 
I approach every video game that I'm working on like it's the first video game I worked in my life. I don't use any like, oh, I did this for Fallout. Eh, I could just take it and put it. It's really easy, but it's not the right way. And I expect all of you to do the same. Um, we're kind of like starting to run out of time, so I just want to give you another example of the same treatment, but this time with human voice. This is a regular singer singing into Portal. My mission here was to portray a hero with a theme, okay? But she was otherworldly, worldly. She was a witch. She was very, very pretty and freaking evil, okay? And she has this poisonous element to her. And she is very sweet and she is very seductive. But then she'll kill you in a second. So. This is what I wrote for her. And it's a very sweet melody and the chords are everything. But once you put it through the right effects, when you put it into the right processing thing, suddenly you get like this evil, beautiful witch. Anyways, we're almost uh, done. So um, I don't know. I mean, any questions? Of course. Go ahead. Thank you. Ian, thank you very much. We need your name. Uh, hello, I'm Jacob. Hi. I'm a sound designer. Oh, first of good. all, <laughs> first of all, it's very nice to meet you in person. I'm a big fan. Thank you. And uh, you've talked about a lot about music in space, in Starfield. But uh, how about uh, worlds that are out of this world, but are fully magical? Like, maybe you remember 20 years ago, you wrote music for Lionheart, Legacy of the Crusader. Yes. And then there is how this... How do you know it? How old are you? <laughs> I'm 26. And I played it, played First it like... First time somebody's just told me about this game. <laughs> All right, go on, go on. <laughs> and then... There is this ethereal plane theme, mm -hmm. and there are also very interesting chord progressions there. But I feel there are different chord progressions that you used in, like this kind of space opera music. So can you talk about more more about magical worlds? So again, magical world is not really much different than the world in space. Okay. We want to create something that, again, will put you in a state of mind is like, I'm not standing on the ground, okay? I'm somewhat floating, and at any given moment, I could turn into something different, magically disappear, magically appear, or same thing in space. I could fly in the speed of light. It's almost the same, however. One little trick that I'll give you. Um, the big difference between the technique of space and technique of magic, in magic, I always try to play a little bit modes from the past. So. Okay, think about that, okay? Oh, we're already in magic land, right? <laughs> We already so I'm using sort of like modes that are very very basic as far as sound design I'm using almost the same thing but as far as the modes 
I'm taking it to maybe the 15, 1600, you know, all the Dorian modes, um, Aeolian modes, you know, Phrygian modes, all these things. Suddenly, we are out of this place, but we're in a magical place. Okay, thank you. Of course. But don't tell nobody that I talked to you. you know, it's like, <laughs> <laughs> Any more questions? We don't have? Okay. Don't be shy. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so I, I just want to tell you, you know, it's like uh, lots of people are coming to me and telling me like, oh, you know, it's, thank you, I love your work and blah, blah, blah. But you got to understand, the real honor is for me. Standing in front of people that are the future of the industry is pretty much like one of the, you know, peaks in our careers, not only me, or other composers. You know, really have sort of like the ability to teach you something and then you will take it and you'll make it probably tons better than what I could do is something that I feel that it really makes my life more beautiful. Thank you very much. Thank you.